Okay, uh, an announcement. We, okay, so this Friday, we had planned to have our test. I was gonna be out of town. I'm still gonna be out of town, but uh, the way the exam is going to work is it will be a take-home exam, okay? Uh, so what that means is that you will take the exam home and do it. And you'll turn it in on Monday, okay? So you can work on it over the weekend. Now, um, I don't plan on making it much longer than I perhaps would have for an in-class exam. Um, I'm going to ask that you uh, restrict yourself from certain sorts of things. Like, uh, for example, you're allowed to look at anything that is directly linked on, um, on Canvas. Okay, so like, for instance, you could go to the YouTube channel, okay, um, and you could look at the slides or your notes, those sorts of things would all be fair game, but uh, you can't like go searching on the web for, for certain things, Does that makes sense, so uh, you're kind of on the honor system as far as that goes, but that's how this is going to work. Make sense? Yeah, Monique. No, no, just, well, I guess, yes, you will have to turn it in on Monday when you come to class. <laughs> so I guess that will be the end of the time that you have allotted to work on it. But I'll distribute that thing on Wednesday. I'll, I'll post it in, in Canvas, and you can just download it and work on it uh, till Monday. Make sense? All right. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see here. Who have I haven't interviewed? Okay, so like uh, uh, Grant, did I interview you while you were? Okay, so Grant, why don't you come up? I'm gonna put my mask on here. On Friday, then we'll leave the classes. We'll take you next door and do the assessment. The test, so the, you won't have class on Friday. That'll just be a time you can devote to working on the test. Okay. I won't even be here. I mean, you could come here if you want and look around. Uh, or work work in here if you want, but uh, but I won't be here. All right. So let's see. I'm going to stop sharing this. And actually, I want to pause. What am I doing? I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Oh yeah, stop share. Okay, and I'm going to pause the recording. Okay. Okay. So we were talking about subsets last time. Oops or we were talking about sets. And one of the last things we left off on were subsets, okay? We asked the question, okay, so under this definition, all, all it says is any, do you guys remember what this means right here? What does, what does this mean? What does that mean? X is a member of A, right? So X is a member of A. For all X, X, a member of A implies that X is also a member of B. That's what subset means. Now, what if, uh, you know, is it true that for all X, oops, what in the world is going on here? This thing is like constantly. So X, a member of S implies X is a member of S, is that true? Yes. So is S a subset of its own self? Yes. S is a subset of its own self, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this thing is labeling. I'll have to work on this. I don't know why it's doing that, but I'll work on it later. It's labeling every time I write something. I guess it really wants you to know that it's me that's writing it, not somebody else or something, okay? All right, so we talked about that last time. So here's kind of a uh, but this is this is for a proper subset. Now, when you talk about proper subsets, you specifically don't want the sets to be equal, okay? And what that means is that there's some element that belongs to the one but doesn't belong to the other. Does that make sense? So for all X, so look at this, what does it say? This right here, this part right here, 
this part right here is basically saying that A is a subset of B, okay? Just a regular old subset. That was what we had before. And what's this saying? And what? You guys read the logical statement there? And what? The, there is an element that does what? Yeah, that's, that's actually an element, right? So, I mean, there's something out here, in other words, right? So there's some element like out here that's kind of outside of A, but, but in B, does that make sense? So that's what it means to be a proper subset. So this is kind of like the difference. So notice like the, the, the notation has changed, right? Now you have this sideways U instead of like a sideways U with, with like the thing underneath. So it's like the difference between less than or equal to and what? Less than, yeah, that's exactly right. Does that make sense? So that's what it means to be a proper subset, proper subset, okay? All right, I want you guys to work on this, okay? So, so first of all, uh, well, I'll, I'll just let you work on this, okay? So and, uh, there are subset, membership, uh, proper subset notations used, and I want you to decide the truthfulness and falsehood of each one of these things, okay? So I'll give you a few minutes to work on that, all right? Okay, what do you guys have for me? Is zero an element of the empty set? No, clearly that's false, okay? The empty set doesn't have anything in it, right? In particular, the, the number zero couldn't be in there. Is the empty set a member of the set consisting of zero? No, it's not a member. It would have to be kind of listed as one of the members, yes? What is the only member of this set? Zero is the only member of this set. See what I'm saying? Zero is the only member of this set. The empty set is not a member of this. What is it though? A subset, yeah? Okay, so this is false, okay? Is the set consisting of zero a subset, a proper subset in fact, of the empty set. No, that's a that's garbage. Okay? Is anything a proper subset of the empty set? Remember, to be a proper subset of the empty set would mean that you would have to find something in the empty set that was not in the thing that was a proper subset of it. But there's nothing in the empty set. You know what I'm saying? It's just a silly statement. So this one is false. Okay, what about number four in light of what we decided on number two? What about number four? Is the empty set a proper subset of the set consisting of zero? True. Yeah? Think about it. The empty set is a set. It just happens to be a set with no elements in it. Okay? And... The empty set is actually a subset of every set. Does that make sense? <laughs> the empty set is a subset of every set. And in fact, the empty set is a proper subset of this one because what's an element, what is an element in the set consisting of zero that is not in the empty set? And what's that? Zero, okay? Zero is an element in the set consisting of zero that is not in the empty set, therefore, the empty set is a proper subset of the set consisting of zero. Yeah? That makes sense? Ask questions on that one. That was a little, little tricky, but that's the first one that's true. Okay, what about the fifth one? The set consisting of zero is a member, member of the set consisting of zero. False. Okay? The set can look, the, what are the only members of the set consisting of zero? Zero. Okay. The set consisting of zero is not zero. Yeah. 
It's like zero with clothes on. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you kind of put the, you've put the bracket notation around it. It's no longer just zero, it's the set consisting of zero. You see what I'm saying here? Okay, the set consisting of zero is not a member of the set consisting of zero, that is false, okay? All right, the set consisting of zero is a proper subset of the second zero. That is false. What, what, what would have been true? A normal subset. Like if I would have put the little line under there, then that would have just fallen into the category of every set is a subset of itself, yeah? Kind of like every number is less than or equal to itself, but it's not less than itself, yeah? <laughs> Okay. What about number seven? Now, this is where it gets kind of weird. Uh, you can actually think of the empty set as a thing, right? So this set that we're looking at here is the set consisting of the empty set. Yeah. So the set has the empty set in it. Like the empty set is behaving like an element, like one or something. Yeah. Now, is the set consisting of zero a subset of the set consisting of zero? Yes, that is true. Okay, so those are some, some interesting things. Now, what about, what if I would have said this? What, it, okay, here's a couple of other ones. Is the empty set a subset, a proper subset of the set consisting of the empty set? Is the empty set a proper subset of the set consisting of the empty set. Yes. What is an element in the set consisting of the empty set that is not in the empty set? The empty set, yeah? The empty set is behaving like an element in the set on the right, yeah? Okay, so this is actually true. Okay, here's something that's kind of weird. Is the empty set an element or a member of the set consisting of the empty set? Yes, right? The set consisting of the empty set has the empty set as a member, yeah? Okay, so that's actually true also. So isn't that kind of weird? I think that's pretty cool. Um, so I just wanted to throw those couple on there for free. Any questions on that? False, 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 true, false, false, true, true, true. going on here. There we go. Okay, set cardinality. Okay, you guys have read about this in the heart of mathematics, right? The word cardinality has been used. Now we're going to sort of talk about it in a little bit, a little bit more detail. And this is going to become a little bit more detailed in the next couple of lectures. So the definition is if there are exactly n distinct elements in S, where n is a non-negative integer, by the way, how would I say this statement using set symbols? N is a non-negative integer. How would I say that? We had some notation for certain sets. So N is an element of, there were some special sets that we named. Non-negative integer means zero, one, like zero would be allowed. Does that make sense? Yeah? Zero, one, two. Wasn't there a set that we had that contained zero? What was that? Then, right, uh, the n, right? Bold faced n, the natural numbers contain zero. If there are exactly n elements in a set, we say that S is finite, okay, where n is just some non negative integer. If not, uh, S, well, S is infinite, okay? The cardinality of a finite set A denoted by absolute value of A. Sometimes, sometimes people actually put a little number symbol in front of the set. They'll say number A, okay, like a little pound symbol, you know, in front of it. Um, that is representing the size of that set. So that's the number of distinct elements in a set. Okay. Sometimes, this is kind of weird, sometimes in a set, you'll have multiple occurrences of the same element. For instance, uh, it may not be true in this class, I'm trying to think right now, 
But if I were to make a set of all the first names of everybody in this room, there's a chance I might have multiplicities of some of those names. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when I went to count the total number of distinct names, that's, that's what absolute value means. Those ones that are multiples, that would only be counted one time. Is that making sense? Okay. So like all of the Johns, if there were four of them uh, or something, those would all count as one thing when I like looked at the cardinality of that set. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about like the, the rational numbers, like when you were listing all the rational numbers. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So like there were there were lots that were kind of repeated and you didn't really count those an additional time. You're only counting, right? So like one over two, two over four, three over six. The, you were kind of encountering those as you were snaking through, but really those were all the same thing. Those were counted one time in the cardinality of, of the rational numbers. By the way, cardinality is something that isn't just restricted to finite sets, as you've already discovered. Yeah, I said it here, but it turns out cardinality, the reason you use that term cardinality is because it applies broadly, not just to finite sets, but to infinite ones also, as we will see. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. All right, what is the size of the empty set? What is the size of the empty set? How many elements are in there? No, zero. Yeah, the empty set has nothing. What is the size of the set consisting of one, two, and three? Three, okay. Now, what is the size of the set consisting of the empty set? Ooh. One, there is one element in that set, namely the empty set. And what is the size of, what is that Q thing? Remember what that was? This is the rationals. Size of the rationals. Well, it turns out that the size of the rationals is equal to the size of the natural numbers, which is equal to the size of the integers. Okay, uh, which is also equal to the size of the positive integers. Okay, and there's actually a notation for that. Did they, I, I'm pretty sure they said this in Heart of Mathematics. Do you remember what this was called? This is actually given this, this size of infinity and this, this is infinite, yes, but it's actually given a specific notation for this particular size. This is called the listable or countable infinity and we'll talk more about that later. But do you remember the letter that they assigned to that? It's a Hebrew letter. Aleph, okay, which is, okay, and then you put a little sub-zero on there. That's Aleph not, okay? That's the very first count, that, that's the very first level of infinity. It's like the infinity that you would create if you just never stopped counting. Does that make sense? Like what other larger infinity could there be? You just go one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Five, six, seven. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. Eight, nine. And then if you never stopped, that's like the first level of infinity that, that you would ever encounter. Does that make sense? And so that one is called all if not, right? This is the Greek letter all of. Okay. Does that make sense? And we'll talk more about the countable or listable infinity later on, but uh, just wanted to throw that one out there, okay? Power sets, ooh, power sets, okay? The set of all subsets of a set A is, is that's the definition of the power set. And it's denoted by kind of a script P of A, okay? All right, let's talk about this example. 
I start with a set that just has two elements in it, A and B. Think about it. What are all the subsets? I wish it, I wish I would have done a, a reveal of this next line, but I forgot to put that on there. What are all the subsets of the set consisting of A and B? Like what, you know, what are all the subsets? The empty set, that's a subset, yes? So that will be an element of the power set, right? The power set is the set of all subsets of a set, <laughs> okay? So the empty set is an element of the power set. So is the set consisting of A by itself, yeah? So is the set consisting of B by itself. And so is the whole set itself, right? The set consisting of A and B, that, that's the intent, right? This guy right here is really just A repeated. Yeah, so that's just A right there, okay? Now I want you to note something here, note. Uh, the size of A here, okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but what's the size of A? <laughs> Two, okay? And what's the size of the power set of A? Four. Okay. Why is there value worth more than one? Like when there's just A. Oh, you're going to have the whole set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there are two elements in there. Yes, A and B. I was going to lowercase A. Okay. Yeah, no, capital A. Uh, all right. So what do you think the relationship is between a set and its power set in terms of size. Yeah. Two to the size of the thing. Yeah, that's actually true. So for instance, what if I looked at the, the empty set? So, okay, the empty set, okay. What is the size of the, so I start with the empty set. What is the size of the empty set? <laughs> Zero. What is the power set of the empty set? Okay, well, okay, I'm going to start making a list of all the subsets of the empty set. What's the only subset of the empty set? The empty set. Right? So what is the size of the power set of the empty set? One, which by the way is two to the zero. Yeah? Which is two to the size of the empty set. Yeah? See what I mean? All right, so Monique is, is kind of uh, giving us a hint of, as to what's going on. Now, what if I did the power set of the power set of the empty set? What if I did that? Okay. So what if I said, hey, uh, what is the power set of, of this other thing I just created? See what I'm saying? I can kind of iterate the power set operation. So what would I get? Well, let's think about it. Here's, here's the power set of the empty set. I want to I want to take the set of all subsets of that. First of all, is the empty set a subset of that? Yes. Okay, so the empty set is a thing, but also the whole set itself. Do you know what I'm saying? So like the set consisting of the empty set. Yeah? And what's the size of that thing? Size of the power set of the power set of the empty set. Uh, okay, how many elements are in there? Two, which is like two to the first, which is like two to the size of the power set of the empty set. Yeah? And hey, what's stopping us? Can we not just keep going? What about the power set? of the power set of the power set of the empty set. You know what I'm saying? So I want to take the set of all subsets of this two element thing. Well, that's going to be like building the two element set we just did. Does that make sense? I mean, think about it. I, I could like rename this guy. I could call this A and I could call this guy B. And then I basically could just copy what we did down here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just do the exact same thing. So uh, let's think about this. What do I get? Uh, so first of all, 
what uh, is the empty set a subset of the set consisting of the empty set and the set? The set consisting of the empty set and the set consisting of the empty set. Is the empty set a set subset of that? Yes. Okay. Okay. What else? What about the set? Okay. What? Okay. Thinking of this guy, the empty set as an element. I can take the set consisting of the empty set. Right. So that's like, right. Remember this guy right here is like our little a. Yeah. But what else could I do? Right, thinking of the set of the empty set, the set consisting of the empty set as an element itself, the set with that in it, yeah? We put like another layer of clothes on there, yes? Okay, so the set consisting of the set consisting of the empty set, right? So this guy right here is like our, our B, yes? And there's one more element. What's the last element? The set consisting of the empty set and the set consisting of the empty set. That, that's just the whole set. Does that make sense? Yeah? And then we close this thing off. Look at all those curly braces. That's exciting. You know what I mean? Okay? So after, so after all, there's our A and there's our B, right? I'm just trying to kind of stave off any confusion here. It's really just what we did down here. Yeah? And notice, what is the size of the power set of the power set of the power set of the empty set? How many elements are in there? Four. One, two, three, four. Yeah? Four. Which, by the way, is, is the same thing as two squared, obviously. Which, by the way, is the same thing as two to the what? The size of the power set of the power set of the empty set. Is it not? Yeah. Now let's just stop there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we could keep going here, but uh, it's well, the next one is going to have two to the how many elements? Two to the fourth. Yeah. And uh, and that's that's going to be uh, quite a list. That's 16 elements. Yeah. Yeah, that would be really exciting, right? To try to get all those braces correct. Okay. So the claim is that if, so here's the claim. The claim is that if, uh, or, or let me just say it this way. Well, let me, yeah, let me say it this way. If the size of A is less than infinity, then, then what's the size of the power set of A gonna be equal to? Monique said it was? Two to the what? Two to the size of A. That's right. Okay. Any questions on that? It's exciting. Cartesian product named for Rene Descartes of I think, therefore I am fame. Yes. Famous philosopher. Uh, famous, uh, just about everything actually, okay? Mathematician, you ask the topic, Rene Descartes probably knew a lot about it, okay? Set A, it looks like A times B, but we say, we say uh, you know, A cross B sometimes for the Cartesian product is this collection of ordered pairs, A comma B. You guys have done this sort of thing before with numbers. Do you know what I'm saying? Like X comma Y, right? Where you've really just been talking about real numbers uh, across the real numbers. Sometimes you even write this like R with a two on it. Yeah, that means the set of all ordered pairs of real numbers. So A cross B is just the set of all AB. What do you say when you see this bar right here? such that A belongs to A and B belongs to B, yeah? So the first entry is an element of capital A and the second entry is an element of capital B, yeah? Okay. Okay, here's like a little example. 
if A is just the set consisting of A and B, and B, capital B is a set consisting of one, two, three, these are all the ordered pairs that I can form. You see that? I could put A with, I could put A, so like the first, right, A cross B has an, has an, an element of capital A in the first entry every time, yes? So I can either put little a with one or with two or with three, yes? But I can also do that with, with what? With little b. Little b is also an element of capital A. Okay, so a, a comma one, a comma two, a comma three, but also b comma one, b comma two, b comma three. Hey, I have a question. What do you think the size, right? So let me just say if the size of a and the size of B are both less than infinity, then, then, okay, so I'm saying that the size of A and the size of B are less than infinity. What do you think is true about the size of A cross B? Well, it's less than infinity, but can you tell me precisely what it is? The size of A times the size of B, because you can put any element of A with any element of B, yes? Right, it's the size of A times the size of B. Just like here, uh, A was of size two, capital B was of size three, and what was the size of A cross B? Six, which is two times three, yeah? Does that make sense? I didn't think about that, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you can only do one element of capital A with one element of capital B. Yes. Yes, it's an ordered pair. Yes. Now you could make ordered triples. If you had a third set, you could make ordered triples. Yes. Okay, so you kind of extend this idea further. Make sense? This is just a generalization of what you've been used to doing with like uh, pairs of real numbers in calculus. Yeah, and in algebra for that matter. Truth sets of quantifiers, okay? Given a predicate P, remember a predicate is like a, basically a statement that's going to depend on a variable. I often call that like an open sentence, yeah? An open sentence. You know the truth value once you know what the variable value is. And a domain D, kind of like our universe, the truth set of P is the set of elements in D where P of X is true, okay? The truth set of the predicate P is the set of elements in D in the domain where P of X, the open sentence P of X is true, okay? We're using some of our logical language here. So it's the set of all X, the set of all, right? Remember, whenever you see that, you say the set of all X in the domain. And again, what do you say when you see this? Such that, uh, such that P of X is true, yeah? Find the truth set of P of X uh, where P of X is this statement, X squared is less than three, where the domain is the integers, yeah? That Z is, is the integers. So in other words, I want you to tell me what is the set of all X in the integers such that P of X, okay? Well, P of, so again, this is like X and D, such that P of X, such that X squared is less than three. Okay, uh, can you like make a roster? Okay, remember we had like the roster method, we had the set builder method, yes. The set builder method kind of uses such that, but here I, I think that we could literally just list the elements that belong to this set. What are they?
what integers have the property that x squared is less than three? One, negative one and zero. Yeah, negative one, zero and one. Right, so this way, this this uh, this over here on the left is really just a, you know, a complicated way of saying, oh, the set consisting of negative one, zero, and one. Yeah, okay. Would it change if I put an equal sign on here? No, right? Because two and negative two, right? We're only talking about the integers. Two and negative two still would not be included, right? Two squared is four. It's not, it's not less than or equal to three, okay? Yeah. Yeah, but less than or equal to. Yeah. Right, less than or equal to, yeah. Make sense? Okay. This is called the truth set of the predicate P, okay? Uh, X belonging to some kind of universe or domain where, where P of X happens to be true. And sometimes you can literally just write down a patterned list and build a roster of, of the elements that belong to that set. Okay. That's it. Next time we will talk about set operations. Okay. Things like unions, intersections, differences, and the like. And we'll see a version of De Morgan's law that involves sets.